championship. Wayne Gardner powers towards the line on the Rosmond's Honda. A place in the history books as he takes the chequered flag, the first Australian ever to win the World 500cc Championship. It's Wayne Gardner punching the air in delight as Eddie Lawson takes second place and Mamola third. But the new champion is Wayne Gardner. There he is, punching the air. Exciting stuff, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, Wayne Gardner. Come on, Wayne. We're wearing roses, both of us, and that's for a reason that I'll explain to you a little bit later on. So, what, what's that that you brought? That's a, a little model? Well, mm -hmm. this is your big chance to be a racer. Everyone always wants to be a racer, so this is your big chance. Yeah. Why is this? Is this and supposed so to be you? a little present. Well, this is me, actually, in a remote control model, yeah. um, which comes from Japan. Yeah. Terrific. So, do you want to have a go? Does it? I'm the first to stay on it, not come off it. No, no, exactly, <laughs> yeah. Do you have Velcro on your bottom like that when you're uh, <laughs> I'll tell you what, sometimes I need it. <laughs> you would, wouldn't you? Is he sitting properly? He's ready for he's action. He's crouched properly, right. Do you yeah. want to give us a quick demo? Of how good well, I'll try. I'm not really an expert on this myself, but yeah. uh, I'll give it a shot. Yeah, okay. Where do you want to go? Stick it a bit over there. We'll okay. give, the, give the cameraman something to worry about. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. And this is supposed to be you in action. It's, it's remote control. Yeah. Is, oh, okay, you ready? Yeah, go. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Very nice. I One think. Longer. So that's the way yeah, to do it, is it? Let's all right, you put it down, yeah. Let's see what you okay. can do. Yeah, all right, go. Cool. Yeah. Ready? Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I think he's got a headache from yeah. that. Right. Well, pick him up <laughs> there. Pick him up and back. Yeah, well, come on. One more. Well, all right, all right. Oh! <laughs> right. Well, that's the end of him. <laughs> Good. You'll go a bit better than that in Donington on Sunday, I hope. I hope. Oh, certainly a demonstration. You're going to give that little chap to me for the children in need, aren't you? Yes, I am dead. That's a fantastic piece of machinery, and I'm sure if we auction it or whatever we do, we'll raise a bit of money for it. That'll be in November. Well done, thank you. Okay. Now, I have to say that I never rode a motorbike in my life, because I find it... Still going over there somewhere. <laughs> Carry on, sir. Showing more sense to the audience, he's leaving. Yeah. <laughs> A real bike, of course, is a great deal bigger. And how fast do these 500cc things go? Well, they've got a top speed of around 320 kilometres, 310, 320. What's so that very, in, very in real distance? Oh, a couple hundred miles an hour. It's much more than 320. It's about 170, 180 miles it's an hour. Nearly 200, yeah. And what about on the corners? Well, it varies. I mean, different circuits vary in different corners, but um, you can get on most circuits, you're averaging about 160, 180 k's, which is, you know, yeah, 100 miles an hour. Again, a, a Grand Prix car. Mm goes it's about that wheels. fast <laughs> and it's got four wheels yeah i know <laughs> yeah it's um it's dangerous. it probably looks worse than what it is it's not as dangerous as everyone seems to think i mean injury wise you probably get more injuries in in the horses in what you know jockeys and so on uh we're improving circuits all the time giving runoff areas and so on but uh, it's not that bad but if you come off that that, that bike yeah i mean it looks tremendously dangerous you, mm -hmm. you, the way you lean over for starting, you use the knee as a kind of third wheel quite yes, often. that's right. It? So, if you come off a bike, I'm sure you have, at say 200 kilometers an hour. Well, you haven't got much chance, have you? Well, that's, I'm just trying to explain that uh, we're making a big push at the moment with safety and uh, trying to get barriers moved back and armco and sand traps put in. Because nine times out of ten, if you fall down and not hit anything, something solid as such, a fence or whatever, you'll get up and walk away. Uh, at the worst, a minor fracture or something, but there's... How many minor fractures have you had? <laughs> I've had a few. Um, yeah. Nothing... In this um, non-dangerous sport. <laughs> but I've been doing it for 10 years now, but yeah. uh, I've had, of course, some fractured fingers and ankle and collarbone. What do your family think about you doing this? <sighs> well, they're not really impressed. Um, they're very proud of what I've done and to become world champion, but uh, they watch the Grand Prix now live in Australia, which is broadcasted over there, and... Uh, it's usually on sort of midnight, two o'clock in the morning because of the time change. Yeah. And uh, when it's on, my mum sits up and watches the start, my dad watches the start, and he's in his pajamas. And of course, as soon as, the, as, soon as we're off the start and he's, we're away, he's out the back door and he's up the back water and he's tomato plants in his pajamas or he's uh, walking up and down the street. And uh, he doesn't like to watch and it frightens him and uh, he worries. And then of course he comes in at the end and says, how do you do? Yeah. And mum says, oh, he's won or he's lost or, or whatever. So yeah, he's, he's really good. Do they give you a very first bite? 
No, in fact, they've been trying to talk me out of it for years. They're still <laughs> trying, but um, it's, a, it's a living. It's an enjoyable living. I love what I do. I'm, I think I'm very lucky because um, I'm extremely well paid for a hobby that I like doing. So uh, it's yeah. great. It's not a, uh, is it a big sport in Britain? I mean, it's a big sport in, in places <coughs> like uh, Japan. Mm. And I think in the Iron Curtain countries, it's tremendously big. Yes, I mean, we went there last year to Czechoslovakia. It was a return after many years of absence, and uh, they got 170 or 80,000 people. And like at Athens, we get 200,000. In fact, I've just come from Japan, and we had oh, something like 180 or 90,000 people from there. So it's a very, very big sport in Europe and Japan, and now becoming very big in Australia. Does it mean that you don't have a real base, that you spend most of your life? <coughs> well, I live in, actually, Monte Carlo and uh, again with all the Form 1 drivers and they all live down that area so uh, that's my base in Europe and that's actually where I'm a resident of and of course I return home I wouldn't Australia. have thought there was that much money. There's a, you've made a great deal of money out of it. Oh, I've had my fair share, yeah. yeah. Uh, but for something that, that because as I say, we, we don't... Is it big in America, motorbike racing? No, it's, it's improving. Um, it, it's gaining a lot of TV coverage at the moment and a lot of uh, exposure and they, people are starting to realise that it is exciting and uh, at the moment it's really on the up and up and in fact in some countries it's much larger than the Formula 1 car racing and uh, yeah. I think it's actually more exciting to watch because you can see the drivers or sorry all the riders and you can see the machines sliding and it's much closer um, for race and so it's gaining a lot of coverage and a lot of uh, good image now. Do you have uh, like um, racing drivers, mm -hmm. cars, do you have the, the, the bimbos in the pits and all that kind of stuff? <laughs> Everyone asks me that. Uh, it <laughs> Why don't you come and find out? <laughs> yes, it has I'm got a... I'm 50. <laughs> yeah, but it's never too late to start. Oh, that's easy for you to say. Um, Still, go on. <laughs> uh, it, yes, there is ones around, it, but that's all part of the glamour and the glitter of it all. And yeah, there's now sponsors and bright colours and... Are you a bit of a wild man? Oh, I have my times, yes. Uh, we have quite a few laughs on the, on the track and travelling around the world and uh, we have our real big moments. You have trouble with the locals when you race abroad? <laughs> well, I've got one good story actually about that and uh, I went to, a couple of years ago I was racing in Spain and of course we had an arm wrestling competition all the way down there and they, um, I got a sore elbow out of it and I went to the Spanish doctor and they said, uh, I've got a sore elbow and I'm racing and he said, oh, oh, I have these tablets. So I said, oh, okay. So he gives me these packet of tablets and they look, they're a torpedo shape. And I thought, they're very strange tablets, but I figured that you know, whatever's bad for you is, is, is going to end up good. So, uh, of course, I'm eating them and they taste like wax and it was disgusting taste. <laughs> and I thought, this can't be right. But then again, I thought, everything is bad for you. It has to be good. So, of course, I'm eating them and eating them and, and then I'm back at the hospitality unit and they said, uh, how's your elbow? I said, oh, good. I've got these new tablets to fix it. And they said, uh, oh, give us a look. And I said, they said, how'd you have these? I said, oh, I ate them and drank them. He said, you're not supposed to put them there, you're supposed to put them in the other end. And, uh, <laughs> and he said, I said, no one of they tasted horrible, but uh, it was really embarrassing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and of course, <laughs> of course the, uh, all the uh, journalists come in and say, oh, typical Australian, they can't tell, they're always upside down, you know, or they can't tell their mouth between their backside, etc., etc. Okay. So Jokes about the ring of confidence. Yeah, right yeah right. exactly. So <laughs> how do you go about, are you going to psych yourself up for this, or are you going to hate the other guy? Well, because there's a little bit of a love-hate relationship already without having to psych ourselves up. Yeah. Um, you know, it's basically you psych yourself up and it's a, it's a week's preparation. And that starts, you know, like from the Wednesday and then Sunday it's like a climb of emotions and feelings and of course uh, speeding your mind up and of course uh, Sunday's the race and it's the easy part. You don't pretend that all you guys get on well together, do you? <laughs> well, some of us do and some of us don't. But, you know, anyone who's competitive and who is, wants to win something and who really, you know, wants it desperately, of course, you know, you're going to look for that extra little bit and try and psych them out and not, not be too much of a friend. We're friends to a certain extent, but I mean, I wouldn't go and sleep with them or something like that, you know what I mean? Certainly not. I should hope not. <laughs> I was going to say that we wish you luck, obviously, and, you. and this, you are the world champ, yeah. but uh, you've got to win everything if you're going to hold on to your championship this year. Well, I've had an unlucky year. Um, as far as riding goes, um, I should have won the last five Grand Prix straight, but because mechanical failure kept letting me down, and um, I'm actually second in the championship. Yeah. But still, anything can happen. I'm, I'd like, there's five more races left, ending up in South America, 
and I'd like to finish the season off with uh, five straight wins if possible and really show them, you know, who's the boss. I hope it keeps fine for you on Sunday and it's a Thank really you. good day's racing. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you. Wayne Gardner. We wish him well at Darlington. Thanks very much for starting the show on the 1935 Triumph. Emma Sams, of course. Uh, Wayne's going real well. He's, uh, you know, he's riding hard, and the bike's working now, finally.